Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. I posted this card on my blog without a video and had a few inquiries on exactly how I put it together. And so I decided I would do a video for you. And since we're going to do a video using the Wishing You Well stamp set that I used on this card, I thought we would step it up and do a different kind. But as you can see on here, I used a beautiful designer series paper here and that is called the Nature's Poem. It has beautiful colors like Tranquil Tide and Soft Suede, Grapefruit Grove, Mint Macaron, Cajun Craze. Look at the Blackberry Bliss on those leaves, so pretty. So I chose to use this palette here, the Mint and the Grapefruit and the Cajun, and with the White as the Neutral. And so when I made this card, I made it with the Wheat Spray going up and then the bow on the bottom of the card. I had noticed on Pinterest that's pretty much the majority of what people are stamping this image like. But I did a little poll with some of my stamping friends and they said that they did like the spray hanging down. I rem remember back in our homeschool days going on field trips and they all the colonial buildings always had the wheat hanging from the inside and all the herbs hanging upside down. So I did like it this way, especially because the bow really takes center stage here at the top of the card. So to get started on here, let's just review again. We're using the Wishing You Well stamp set, the beautiful organza bow in there, the delicate font. And then because of the design in the Nature's Poem designer paper, I brought out my Rooted in Nature stamp set, and I'm going to use these two leaves here. They have a nice feathery, delicate image here in these leaves that pairs well with the delicacy of the bow. So let's get started here. I used Cajun Craze as the card base, and it is eight and a half by four and a quarter. So eight and a half by four and a quarter, and then I scored it at four and a quarter. And that meant that my designer series paper going on the front was gonna be four by four. And that made cutting up a 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper not so painful for me because, well, it's four by four, I really didn't have to turn it there, because whenever I can get a lot of cuts out of my designer series paper, I'm happy. So that gave me three times three, I get nine fronts on there from a 12 by 12. So we just put that on there, and then I'm just gonna show you a little trick here. On the inside, we're gonna go ahead and finish that off. On the inside, I made, as you can see, I mimicked the outside of the paper here. Okay, so I just took mint macaron and the grapefruit grove and I just stamped them down in the corner so I brought a part of the design of the outside of the card into the inside of the card. And you may be thinking right now that once you use up your designer series paper, if you want to make some more, you can make some more with your stamps if you have the Rooted in Nature bundle. So there we go, that's your card base. Now the tricky part with this card, well it's not really tricky, but very important because you won't be able to fit it into an A2 sized envelope if this panel is sitting up too high. And if you would hear that with your dimensionals and it's up too high, you gotta tear it all apart. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks I do when I'm putting together this type of card and it's using our grid paper. Now, since this is already here, I'm just gonna bring up this piece of grid paper so that you can see it a little bit up close. I love my grid paper. I use my grid paper on it seems like every card I make. So what I wanna do on this card is I'm going to put it on so that it's in down here in the corner and I can see that it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Now to make this panel here, I have a piece of Cajun Craze, whoa, let me grab it here. I have a piece of Cajun Craze that's going to go on top of here and then this panel is going to go here. On this card, oh, where is the card here? Um, the original card. Where's the original card? Oh, on the original card, I just stamped the image on there, but I really wanted to step it up a bit, and that's how we're going to do in here. So this part is just going to be a white panel. I keep getting on the angle with my, um, there we go. You guys are going to start making fun of me, not having my arm in the right place here. So we're just going to put a white panel and 
we're just going to put it onto the border here. And this white panel happens to be two and three quarters by four, and the Cajun craze is three by four and a quarter. But those measurements will be on my blog, so don't worry about that. So there we go. So what we're going to do is we're gonna build up our panel before we put it onto the outside of the card. So to do that, I'm just gonna bring my stamp and trimmer over here. No, not my trimmer, my stamp apparatus. Okay, so I just set up because I made a lot of these cards. These, this is a great card, sending our thoughts and prayers. Great for a get well card. You could um, use it as a sympathy card for sure. That's the most obvious one. And so I wanted to make a lot of these and have them on hand for me. So I put and used my Stamparatus. So I put the wheat spray in there and then I'm just going to, I put a piece of paper, this one is actually four by three and a quarter, but if you have some scraps laying around, just something because you're gonna be cutting it out with an oval. So I'm just going to ink up my image. And of course, as I've said before, if you want a nice level surface to, to um, give a balance there, you can just put a clear mount stamp case under there. Then I'm just going to press down using my Stamparatus and I've got my spray, but look here, I didn't get it quite there down on the bottom here, so I'm just gonna give a little more ink. And that's the great thing about using the Stamparatus. You just can stamp right over that image. And I could have put my magnet up here. I just, a lot of times with the red rubber, it doesn't, the paper doesn't even move, so I don't tend to use it with that. So there we go, we've got that beautiful image done. And then all I'm going to do is remove this plate here. Let's do it a little bit off camera so that I don't. You just lift it up, you bring it straight up and lift it, and then I'm just turning it around and I have my bow on the other side. This is one of the exclusive exclusive um, things that Stamping Up has as opposed to some of the other stamp positioning tools on the market. We can hinge stamp and we can also remove our plates there. So what we're gonna do there now is stamp the bow. Now this blow, bow is rather delicate. So if you have a really juicy ink pad, it might be a little bit difficult to get just the perfect delicacy there. So you can use, um, you can wipe away some of the ink off of your ink pad and then push it back later with, your, with a bone folder. Or you can just use a spot. And there is a grapefruit grove spot in the um, tin box that's in the catalog with the blue, with a knight of navy. It's beautiful. Um, but I just happened to just make one for myself out of a sp blank spot that we have in our catalog. Just go back to the back where the inks are and the accessories, and you'll see that you can buy uninked one by one felt ink spots, and then you can just make your own with a reinker. And so there we go, we've got a beautiful bow there. So now I'm just going to take this, I'm gonna move my Stamparatus out of the way, and I am going to go die cut that. There we go, I die cut it. And I also have the oval that's going to go underneath here. Okay, so we have this part here, and now we have the image that we stamped using the Stamparatus, and then we're just going to adhere this. These ovals are in our Layering Ovals Framelit set, and the thing that I really love about these Layering Ovals is they have a nice tight border on them, so it's not like a big wide border, so it just works beautifully. There you go. And I use the next to the largest scallop and the next to the largest um, oval, the regular oval in that stamp set. And I'll have those measurements on my blog as well. So we're gonna put this right on flat against our panel because we're gonna pop up the actual oval when we're done. So we're just gonna keep this one flat on this panel here. Oop, I almost put it upside down. So there's our spray with the beautiful bow up at up on the top. And when I made when I did it the other way, it was really hard to fit the bow down in the bottom of the oval. And so this really gave me more room up here to put that bow. So now here is the trick we're going to do with our 
grid paper. Okay, so there's our grid paper. We know that it is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Now we can't go past five and a half. Let me pull this down here a little bit looking at the camera. So we can't go past five and a half because that is where our envelope stops. So what we're gonna do is take this part of the card that creates the uh, focal point that goes above the tent where it opens. So what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it over, look at it as it's supposed to be on the card. We're gonna turn it over and we're going to position it so that we're using our grid paper so that it's not higher than five and a half. You can also get it centered on the card by looking at these one and one quarter blocks here. So right there is a half and a eighth and a half and an eighth. And what we're gonna do is just have it centered there. And now we know where we can put our dimensionals on the card. So holding it, keeping it in place. Well, you can actually, you know, move it because you're gonna have to flip it around. But now you know that your dimensionals aren't too high on your card. So then we're just going to remove the backs of our dimensionals. If you ever can't get these off if you run your finger through them, usually they'll bend. Yep, see it worked. Running your nail through the top, and then it just kind of gives it a little bit of extra oomph there. Okay, so now we know where it's supposed to be. Then we go right back using that same measurement, don't go above five and a half, and then just look at the blocks on the left and the right, and there you have a card that's gonna fit into an A2 sized envelope. Now another little trick I use my grid paper for is when I am going to put a straight sentiment on here. I wanna have it straight, so another thing I will do is I'll use my grid paper and I'll just take a strip of another piece of paper. This just happens to be a strip of basic black that I have. And then I will put, I will use my, and you don't actually have to um, have it over in the corner for this one. And I stamped on a piece of, a scrap piece that I had that when I was cutting off the paper when you cut down the inside. So I had a half inch piece here and I stamped sending you are thoughts and prayers in Cajun craze. And then I'm going to use this handy little strip here that's on the dimensionals. Don't throw those away, they're perfect for this. So now I can use this line here and I can, I can figure out to have a nice straight sentiment if I line this black piece of paper here up against these grid lines on each side. And as you can see, I've got it straight that way. Then when I remove the backing from my dimensional, I can sit, I can line up the sentiment with the black horizon line from this paper, and then I know it's straight. And then I've got a nice straight sentiment there. So that's a trick. So anytime you can just line up a piece of black across you know, your image across your card um, with your card underneath, like on, say, this one. What I did was I just lined up and then I put the sentiment on against this line because it's hard to see if it's straight this way. But if you use that little strip of paper, it's great. And as you can see, I did two different sentiments. I did a get well card, wishing you well, and then a sympathy, sending our thoughts and prayers. And I put on the inside the mint and the Grapefruit Grove from the Rooted in Nature stamp set. So there's two different cards you can make. And see, it's a totally different looking card from the original one I made. But using those tips, because I have made the card and made it go too far, or too, a little bit too far down. So this is a great stamp set. Um, don't overlook this one, it's so beautiful. If you have any questions on how to make this tent card, just go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com, and you'll find all the materials, colors, papers, products I used, and all the measurements.
I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.